Hey everyone, I'm the pro wrestling VTuber dedicated to love and justice, Kit Saberfang. And you know, we've been welcoming so many new people to our community lately. Whether you've joined our Discord server, the live chat and our Twitch stream, or by subscribing to the channel right here on YouTube, I've been seeing so many new faces join the Saber Gang lately that I thought, now's the perfect time to sit down and tell y'all a bit more about myself. Yeah, you know about my love of pro wrestling, but do you know why I got this mask? Or why everything I do is just bathed in purple? I've come up with five facts about myself that you might not be aware of and will hopefully give y'all a better idea of where I'm coming from. And if you come out of it with any pressing questions of your own, you can always feel free to leave a question for me in the comment section below. There's always more to the lore. So before we dive in, I'd appreciate if you hit that like and subscribe. Subscribing to my channel is the best and easiest way to support me and the rest of the Saber Gang as we make our way towards total world wrestling domination. The people yearn for masked Joshi loving wolf boys. So let's give the people what they want. Okay, with all that out of the way, let's head over to the ring and get started. And the best place to start is with my birthday which is May 28th. It's a date that I share with a few different wrestlers, both past and present, along with a few other details that I've discovered along the way. The wrestlers that I share a birthday with include Seth freaking Rollins, Golden Era WWF star, the late Kamala, the recently retired Jumbo Princess, Himeka, as well as the innovator of the Death Valley driver, Etsuko Mita. Remember kids, your favorite wrestler's finishing move was probably created by a Japanese women's wrestler decades ago. I don't make the rules. Beyond sharing a birthday with wrestlers, May 28th holds some greater significance to me as a fan, as it's the day an infamous masked wrestler made their in-ring debut. Which brings us to our next fact, <laughs> why the mask? When it came to my presentation as a VTuber, I always knew I wanted to have a mask so that no matter what else I was wearing or whatever situation I was in, the first impression would always be, this is pro wrestling. And since I love Japanese pro wrestling, I also knew that I wanted my mask to pay tribute to the mask wrestlers from overseas, as opposed to going in a more Lucha Libre inspired direction. I had two main inspirations for what I was looking for in my mask. And the first relates back to my birthday, May 28th, the in-ring debut of Satoru Sayama, best known as the original Tiger Mask. Sayama is a legend in both pro wrestling and mixed martial arts, having innovated the hybrid style of combining martial arts with traditional catch and lucha libre styles, which would be the building blocks of the junior heavyweight style popularized by the likes of Jushin Thunder Liger and the great Sasuke in the mid-90s. When Sayama debuted the Tiger Mask gimmick in 1981, New Japan pro wrestling fans weren't that keen to give it a chance. This was Antonio Inoki's strong style era of Japanese wrestling, and while gimmicky characters may be acceptable for those in the West, native born masked wrestlers weren't really a thing at the time. There was also the matter of Tiger Mask being a known licensed character. Having been a highly successful anime and manga series, it's easy to see how fans found it kind of cheesy of New Japan to try and create a quote, real version of the character. But Sayama would quickly prove his critics wrong, demonstrating an otherworldly blend of grace, athleticism, and serious martial arts abilities. Sayama's in-ring abilities are still impressive to this day, and his matches with Dynamite Kid remain must-watch bouts for any serious wrestling enthusiast. And in 1985, they founded one of the first mixed martial arts organizations in the world, Shuto, and in 1994, organized the annual Vale Tudo Japan event, which is considered a predecessor to organizations such as Pride. It also had the consequence of introducing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu to Japan, so if that's something you're maybe not super into, uh... <laughs> Sorry about that. There's plenty of other inspirations to be found behind my mask, but before we get to those, let's take a peek behind it. Look in my eyes, what do you see? The same color as my puppies. If you've watched some of my earlier videos, then you have already met my sweet baby girl Latte, as she was featured in my first Wrestling Empire video. She's now an eight-year-old rescue pity and my best friend. My Latte overcame a lot in her young life, having been abandoned on the highway as a puppy before being found by the foster group that we adopted her from. When we adopted her, I was going through some very difficult times and Latte helped me regain a lot of my lost confidence and sense of security. I was experiencing panic attacks for the first time in my life, uh, but having Latte by my side made things a lot better and helped me work through the worst of it. I knew I wanted to 
include some kind of tribute to her when I became a VTuber, and so I decided to adopt her eye color. And besides, I'm always being told that she's got some of the most gorgeous eyes, and I agree. So just remember, every time you see me, you're also seeing a little bit of my latte. And speaking of canines, you've probably wondered, why am I the wolf of the ring and not the, I don't know, tiger of the skies? Oh, sorry, spoiler, spoiler. I did a lot of research on mass culture and pro wrestling and discovered that, unsurprisingly, a lot of Japanese mass culture is influenced not only by Tiger Mask and those who took up the mantle after Satoru Sayama, but by those who were directly inspired by them as well. Like in the case of Fuka Kakamoto, aka Tiger Fuka, who'd go on to inspire even more Tiger Mask wrestlers as a trainer to stardom's icon Mayu Iwatani, Kairi Sane, Azumi, and yes, a certain Sky Tiger that we will absolutely be getting to. I swear we're gonna talk about it. However, as an animal, I didn't really feel like I had a personal connection to tigers. Probably has something to do with me being more of a canine than a feline fan, you know? So I knew from the start that I'd want to present a different kind of animal with my mask. As a pro wrestling VTuber, I have a lot of love and admiration for my fellow digital grapplers, especially those from the world of fighting games. And of all the gaming grapplers out there, Virtua Fighter's Wolf Hawkfield has always been my favorite. He's got the moveset, the goofy attitude, the giant swing. King and Zangief may win the popularity contest, but when it comes to real graps, I'm going with my boy Wolf Hawkfield every time. Wrestling, Wrestling is, is the, the ultimate, ultimate sport. sport. Ow! Sega, I am begging you, bring back Virtual Fighter. For real. Perhaps more importantly though, I saw adopting the Wolf Persona as an opportunity to pay tribute to THE wrestler who introduced me to the Stardom promotion in the first place, Chris Wolf. Chris made her in-ring debut for Stardom back in 2014, and while she only competed for a brief five-year period, the impact she left on international Joshi fans feels generational. Chris was such a wild character with boundless charisma that felt like she was just leaping through screens to command attention. Everything just felt more joyful and more unexpected when Chris was around. It's funny, I get so emotional watching back some old Chris Wolf matches, but it's not like she's gone. She's just retired, living a happy life somewhere in Norway. It's honestly the kind of ending you hope for all your faves. But I can't deny that I find myself daydreaming of what it would be like for Chris Wolf to make a return to the ring. I think she'd still fit right in with today's Joshi scene. And one fun fact about Chris Wolf, they're a founding member of the stardom faction Oedo Tai, which at last brings us full circle to our next inspiration. I've talked about this before in a previous video, but there was a brief period of time where I really fell out of love with wrestling, and there were two wrestlers who pulled me back from the brink. One of them is Maki Ito, and the other is, you guessed it, Starlight Kid. I've been a fan of SLK dating back to 2018 when she first joined STARS and found myself immediately hooked on her presence and incredible in-ring abilities. But it wasn't until she was forced to join Oedotai and started embracing the darker side of her persona that I decided this is the coolest wrestler on the planet, maybe ever. I don't think it gets better than this. This is peak pro wrestling. And here's what I had to say about SLK when I was asked to rate her on a tier list. What can I say about Starlight Kid. She's she's the inspiration. She's an icon. No one is the total package like Starlight Kid. That's just facts. If you haven't already guessed, purple just so happens to be my favorite color. And I knew I wanted to incorporate it into my gear somehow, but ultimately, drowning everything in purple is my tribute to Starlight Kid. She may bounce around to different color gears all the time, but I'll always associate her with the color purple. And I hope all of you will do the same when you think of Kit Saberfang. And that's it. That's all I got for you. Anything else you'd like to know about me, feel free to drop a line in the comments below. And thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. You, my friend, are a real one. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for future videos and join the Discord. And until next time, remember, pro wrestling is for everyone and anything can be pro wrestling.